Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World where we're going to be recapping and reviewing on the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired last night. Eastern Standard uh, Time Zone, 8 o'clock is when it came on on my TV screen. And honey, baby, let me tell you, it was something, it was something, it was something now. It was something, it was something, it was something now. Towards the end, now don't get it twisted. It was kind of slow at the beginning. So we're going to get right on into it, all right? We got Portia and Lauren are out at the NARS, or NARS, cosmetic company. And I'm like, damn, what was this? Is it Atlanta? Well, I'm not a makeup person anyway, so it could be out there and I just not know about it. Because I don't wear makeup like that only on special occasions but anyway they're at the uh nars or nares cosmetic industry company uh and they got champagne they got wine i'm like damn they got a liquor license what was this is this in buckhead or somewhere but yes they were toasting it up while they put makeup on their faces okay now that's one reason why i couldn't this is a sidebar i couldn't get into going to the cosmetic counters because you know how many millions of people come in on a daily basis and use that same makeup and then you putting it on your face <laughs> It just seemed like a nasty industry. I'd just rather pick my color, let me go play with it, and it is what it is. I, I never really liked it that let me go to the makeup count and try on different shades of makeup, especially the foundation and all that. It just didn't seem sanitary to me. But anyway, Lauren and um, Portia are meeting up at the Nars or Nars uh, cosmetic counter or store. And they're trying to get more makeup, I'm sure, foundation or concealer or something to that effect. And just probably looking at seeing what's coming out for the new shades for, um, I guess we're in winter season, so I can't be spring. So, it just is what it is. And uh, Portia goes on and tells her sister that the comings and goings of Dennis McKinley and how are they faring. And it seemed like she kind of got upset with her sister. She was like, well, wait, hold up now. I, I thought we had talked about this. We were going to be moving a little slow or trying to get out this situation. And, you know, of course, Portia like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It seemed like she wanted to get on Lauren, though. <laughs> like, you trying to be uh, saucy or bossy about this? Now, Portia, you did have her in your corner when you was crying like a little baby yourself because you were just so upset of how Dennis had did you. And I'm sure we didn't want to have Mama Diane on at all because I'm pretty sure she feel like, hell no, nah, you don't need to mess with him no more. You just need to take it easy, take it slow, and raise your daughter by yourself, y'all co-parent, and then maybe three or four years down the road if it still seems like it's something there and he's been on his good behavior, then okay. But, like I said, I'm not touching it because, as we know today, currently, they are back together and they are planning a wedding. So, it's not really nothing we can say. But, uh, Lauren was trying to give her some filming time. I don't know if she's trying to come on to the cast or whatnot. That would be something. But, uh... It's just deal with it, deal. But Lauren, she wasn't too thrilled. She wasn't too thrilled at all. Then we have Marlo Candy Portia talking about Eva. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. It was um, Portia telling Lauren, her sister, about uh, what she had found out about Marlo and Candy. And, and uh, Portia was saying about what Eva was saying behind her back when they were trying to find. I don't know what they were trying. I think they were going to the Gay Pride Festival festival at the time and Cynthia needed to find an outfit or whatnot. I think that's what it was and they was in that little boutique shop um, and Cynthia was calling herself trying on and then trying to hear what they were saying and you know vice versa or whatever and Eve was just sitting down there talking about you know um, Portia don't need to be worried about her she need to be worried about what the blogs are saying about her and Dennis McKinley and she need to be healing from her c-section and just that you know it's going off and stuff and of course you got Millie Willie Dilly Messy Boots uh Candy Burrs going back trafficking taking messages here there and everywhere and we need to get her a ticket or, or some type of uh badge where she need to wear like a dunce cap and put her in the corner because she was starting mess she was talking you know amongst her group then she went talking you know with evil and, and cynthia and then she went back and took it to portia and you know she's like a little bone carrier around there and it was just a hot hot mess but anyway um it was you know it just kind of got 
uh, discombobulated and the stories just got, you know, uh, blown out of proportion. But the thing was, evil was talking about Portia in a far away. And so that's the scene that I'm talking about when Eva was trying to throw shade. You know, she's already pregnant and she thinks she all this, that, and the third. And she get to, you know, vent her frustrations or her thoughts out in public. But since she's pregnant, she don't think people going to come for her or should come for her. So that's basically what she was telling Lauren Portia Woods when they were at the NARS uh, cosmetic counter or store buying makeup and Lauren didn't too much want to be carrying on with that shit. She didn't really care, but she was like, well, you know, I'm talking about you and this man right here and all he done took you through and I had to listen to me, mom, and the house, okay? Or me, mom, and other people. And it's just not kosher, sis. So they call themselves like making up each other just a little bit. And uh, Portia acting like she don't understand certain things, uh, but it is what it is. And I just got something across my feed. I can't find it now, but I'm about to go find it. They're saying Yavana has resigned or she left uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, she won't be on the show. I said, why? Because we finna come up and find her that she was the snake. I was kind of hoping that it was somebody else, Nene or Nene would be taping herself. That would be dumb. We know kind But somebody else. I was hoping somebody else was in a party with her to this. Then I said, hmm, could it be Shamia? I'm like, nah, she don't really hang around Nene. She hang around Ken and Portia. So I'm like, okay. But anyway, they're saying, allegedly, that it was Yavana. So that's what's out in the trending uh, topics. Um trending on social media as we speak so i had to investigate that story a little bit more and see if it's something i want to cover but yeah she was supposed to be the snake person the slither slithering snake out of their group uh recording cynthia uh and all her mishaps of what she called herself doing on behalf of nene leaks which i i never understood the whole thing anyway just say what you say and say what you mean and and, and say it in front of that person it, even if you have to say it behind their back but at least you can come back and say i can see it in front of their face too and do it okay so i never understood the whole snake gate thing anyway but anyway that's my updated news while we're getting this review in okay then we go to cynthia cynthia's facetime and tanya about her being newly engaged trying to show her the ring and you know i'm like what's tanya tanya was there wasn't she well maybe she wasn't at the surprise party or uh event that she was hosting uh introducing her wine cellar to the world or to atlanteans or whatnot and maybe tanya wasn't there but she was showing tanya her ring and everything and they were talking about the carnival uh, out in the canada toronto and getting together and coming on down there and having a good old time then we move on from there we got Kane facetime and her friend and she was saying she don't know if she want to leave she kind of feels somewhat she kind of way because she want to go and have fun with the girls as much as she can or, or possibly can but then she wants to be with her baby but her aunt Lori and somebody else is going to be watching the baby um pretty much while she's gone i'm like okay good news good news uh moving on from there then we got dennis calling porsche porsche's getting ready packing doing that whole look um getting her suitcase ready and this that and the third she didn't even tell us who we're keeping the baby i guess he was and other people you know we she don't got so big now i don't think Portia really care one with with uh just long as it's a family member because <laughs> she said she had to go get her groove on she got to get her groove on okay and then we got eva she's still uh traveling I'm like, what? Even like she going in her third trimester. I thought you weren't supposed to necessarily travel in your third trimester because anything can come. The baby can come early and just that and third. It just ain't a good thing to travel. But hello behind. She left and went on about her business. Okay. And I was like, okay. She lying over here. I guess she can lie over there in Canada for a while and come on back over here and lie some more to us. Okay. But it just is what it is. Then we got all the women meet up at the airport and, um, Everybody gets there except for Nene. So, you know, Nene always had to be extra fabulous, fabulous, oh, it's called a fabulously late in a sense. Same thing she did at Marlo Little uh, wig event party. She had to be late on that. So, everybody can see her walk in, eyes all on her, right? Okay. Same deal here. She called herself uh, coming at a later time. Now, I didn't know that, um,. Yvonne was going to show up either. I'm like, damn, okay, you're going to be taping on that as well? Because she did lie 
to Cynthia and Candy when they had asked at Marlo's event, was she the um was she the person going around recording folks, you know, or at least Cynthia anyway? And she said no, she didn't. But as we speak now, like I said, I got a trending hot topic to bring out if I choose to. She's um stating or uh, I don't know if it was Media Takeout or Celebrity Insider. It was one of them had put out that um, she's uh, no longer with Castle Real Housewives of Atlanta mid-season. Okay. But that's how it is. Then we got uh, Cynthia talks about. Or she talks to Marlo. Um, she asked Marlo did Nene um, block her like she asked Marlo to tell Nene. And uh, I didn't get the real gist of it because it's like when Kenya showed up. Marlo whole demeanor changed. <laughs> why are you here we don't need you to be here with us okay but it just is what it is they're gonna be enemies for us over with but what really tripped me out was when they were flying on the airline um when they were seated honey eva and kenya was sitting next to each other i was saying that the cop pot calling the kettle black when did they get back in good graces where they want to share a seat a flight that was probably i don't know how many hours um what, probably seven hours maybe to Canada uh, trip. I can't believe that, but okay. Stranger things have happened. But anyway, um, Nene, I mean, uh, I think she said she left a message because Nene didn't pick up for her. And uh, hopefully the unblocking will be successful once Nene calls herself checking her messages. Okay, but you know how Nene feel. <laughs> Girl, just, just stay blocked. Just write her a letter. Send her a, 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 a um we call it a postgram. <laughs> a telegram. Send it to her via mail. Okay. She'll get it. Because she had to go to her mailbox and pick up her mail, honey. Send it to her the way she sent, sent you that. Um, you no, know, she actually had Marlo do that. Well, okay. I guess y'all using Marlo as a mediator. Going back and forth with the messages. Okay, cool. Fine. Then we got um, Kings in her confessionals. Shade and Marlo and... and, and uh, talking about crashing her wig event and that it was just so funny and delightful and all that. that I was like, ugh, we're going to move on from that. Then we got Kenya and Eva. Okay, I did say that they were sitting on the plane together. Uh, that was a wild moment. Then you got Marlo and Candy. They were sitting together. But as we see, Candy and Marlo are friend friendly it up with one another. Um, they're being, I wouldn't say best buds, but they're communicating on a level that they never had try to be on with one another okay then we got marlo loses her passport i don't know how she went to toronto canada checked in in that country and lost her passport go figure but she's uh you know kind of feeling crazy about it because last time they had a trip and she went she lost her luggage or they lost her luggage i said damn uh marlo maybe you need to get a, a plane before them or after them because i don't know what's going on but you keep having these accidents here but anyway, she makes a joke about it. She said, well, maybe Kenya took it. <laughs> I said, what would Kenya be one with your passport? I don't know. Stranger things have happened. Because even with the situation when she was on a print, um, what do you call it? Celebrity Apprentice over there with Donna Trump. Vivica swore, Vivica Foss that is. Uh, she swore Kenya took her cell phone. So it is plausible. But I'm like, Kenya. Okay, we're just going to not put it on Kenya. We're just going to say, hey, you were talking. You left it there. Somebody swiped it. It is what it is. But, yeah, they say Yvonne is gone, y'all. We'll see. We will see. I'm sure the trending news on the media will be popping hot. But uh, just look for that if you're not looking for it at this time. If it comes across your media feed, let me know. Okay. Um. Then we got... Oh, we got uh, <laughs> Portia get on the plane and she was like, no, she gets off the plane and they're actually traveling to their hotel. Uh, the X Hotel, or Hotel X is what it's called in Toronto, Canada, that uh, Miss T uh, Tanya put them all up in. And she was like a very gracious and nicest, wonderfulest if that's the word host because she gave everybody a good room to share in but no bump bed situation going on with no cots and then that then like that how they did um her when she went on an outing that marlo had called herself um taking part at planning for them 
So Marla was like, I lost my passport. Please don't let me sleep. Please let me have a good room at least. And she like, girl, I'm class. I ain't trashing. Okay. I'm on class mode when I'm in the friendly realm, when I'm in the business realm, and when I'm in my man realm. Okay. Everything's going to be class. I don't, I'm not like you, Marla. I'm not petty. Now, she didn't say that, but that's probably what she wanted to say. But she gave all the ladies a nice room with a nice view of Toronto, Canada. And it was just nice. I, I was glad. I'm like, do they be putting out their own money when they be hosting trips? Or do they just find the venue and set up uh, all the arrangements and everybody have to chime in at a certain point and, and turn in their money or they don't go? How was that? Anybody know? Let me know down in them comments, okay? I always wondered that. But anyway, um... Portia gets in and she said they checked her in and they told her, you know, when she was going through uh, Hartsfield on to where they were traveling to uh, Toronto, Canada. And she said that one of the people had told her she had to pour that out. And she said, I ain't pour all of it out, but I got enough for us. <laughs> After that damn drunk, that damn poor she got to go out all, all the time with that Hennessy, and I smell Hennessy, and that's a that all brown liquor to me is potent. You know what I'm saying? It's, it it stinks, and I'm sure it burns going down. Oh Lord, I'm like that's just like drinking Mad Dog 2020. You know what I'm saying? Anybody know about Mad Dog? I I tasted that in my what 16, 17, 18 years old look, drinking, so I know what it, in Thunderbird. You know that clear liquor, ooh child. <sighs> one shot that'll be it for you okay especially if you're lightweight such as myself but uh yeah she told me i got some hennessy 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 i mean we just say hennessy and coke Portia is down for the count she like where we going what we gonna be doing like we ain't dragging nobody Portia. don't get your panties up in a roar we ain't going out fighting nobody okay she's like well i can show you just give me the hennessy Hennessy from Tennessee. Give me that Hennessy. Girl, you put Portia together along with Toya on Mary the Medicine. You got a party, okay? You got a party. I'll be through after 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour hanging with them. I'll be through and ready to go to bed. <laughs> but that's just me. That's my old self talking, okay? But anyway. Then yeah, nobody want no Hennessy from Portia, but she was trying to turn it up. She gonna have her own little party. She ain't care because she came to have a black girl's summer or a black woman's summer up in there. And she wasn't holding no punches. She was baby free, man free. She just wanted to twerk, 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 twerk already over there in Canada, okay? And when she had to go take a dancing class, that lady told her in her class, we ain't doing no twerking. We doing whining. Whining like belly dancing winding. We ain't doing no twerking. No doing no twerking up here and that lady kind of got indignant i'm like yeah dog kind of person that can i two-step me can i two-step one two one do the snake a little bit mm, 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 mm. can we do something like that like damn but anyway that's how it was over there um miss uh portia was sneaking hennessy over there uh into the country of uh <laughs> After they told her in Atlanta she couldn't take it with her, okay? Portia said, bump that. I'm gonna, my Hennessy coming with me. She had a little flask and everything. I'm like, that damn Portia. I, I, you can't do nothing but laugh at her, honey. You can't do nothing but laugh at her and blame Delta. Delta, Delta, Delta. Just blame them, okay? They didn't do their job. Well, they really did, but Portia just, uh, how you call them, did her PW curve or swerve <laughs> on them, honey. But anyway, the women start talking about who's getting the best and worst hotel room, okay? And then I already told y'all everybody had a good room. Then um, I just want to say Tanya, Tanya was just full of life. She's just, oh, a very happy and warm and embracing type of person. But I was still trying to figure out why Yvonne was on that trip. Why was she on the trail? But anyway, it's just my pun intended. Uh, not to be involved with talking about her anymore because it's, it's no use to. You know, she that chick. She'll get land on some other show. She probably need to go check out um, what's that show? Uh, Hip Hop Atlanta. Go on over there with them folks. But anyway, um, we go back to uh scene three we got tanya she's reminding the ladies marla gave her a bump bed assignment but all the ladies in hotel x is you know right on point is luxury when all the women get there they see how nice the lobby is and how um the hostess or 
people that's checking them in they're very nice they're on point and all that kind of stuff and um we go to cynthia cynthia shows a vlog when she gets in her room she's showing i think it was candy and maybe kenya uh, she was showing that it was a um what do you call it it was a post on her social media feed but how she had planned it and timed it it looked like no baby you just waiting to talk about that to make that a part of your storyline because that was just too why would you be looking at your phone anyway if y'all checking in i'm just saying but anyway um she says that it's a vlog and they're highlighting little b scott is where she was uh making reference to a blogger had put out that the same little card um that nini had present well marlo had presented for nini at her um what do you call that her wine celery opening party the same card with the same uh heartfelt message in the card that nini expressed to her was sent to a vlogging site which was love b scott and v b uh, love b scott um put it out on her website and it's commentary and the show you know there must be a means going on with i think i remember that but i'm not really sure in detail but yeah i sent the uh same thing she gave cynthia she sent a photocopy to little b scott staff for i guess little b scott to read it and see if it's uh authentic and this that and the third because you know you don't want nobody coming back talking about we gotta get litigation against you because you put this out here and it ain't true and you know all that kind of stuff so cynthia started feeling some kind of way so oh was this just a publicity stunt she really wasn't sincere or whatever and um Kenya with her loud big ass mouth she going around him tonight let's check your hotel let's just see if any bugs around here any more snakes slithering around here i'm like girl give it a break give it a rest take a nap that'll be best take a nap but uh you know candy was like well just yeah what it is then cynthia said you know i'm just gonna play nice and, and it's just yeah. she's like, no don't play nice that's just how nini get down and then i'm like hush can you hush honey um then we got um let me see oh and then that's when they settle down and kenya's uh want to put herself out on front street or really she wants to put mark out on front street so she asked the ladies you know how did y'all really feel about uh what had transpired with the little uh triple lunch date that we did about how mark responded to everything and you know did y'all agree with him did y'all like what he was saying and this that and third and of course um let me see <clears throat> then i'm um, sorry i can read my own notes but kenya goes on to say well no it was cynthia going on to say well you know i i was with him until he started interrupting you when he was mad because you were interrupting him and we could understand that get your point out this that and the third but then when you were trying to get your point out he was like interrupting you you know talking down to you and i, I didn't really appreciate that and i'm like cynthia if you didn't appreciate it why didn't you say something see that's what i'm talking about call a spade a spade baby don't matter if they a man woman dog child you know whatever get it off your mind you'll live long okay check a person sometime if they being filed check them tell them hold up you know what i'm saying because you had your man there mike wasn't gonna let nobody put no hands on you or talk to you indifferent in any kind of way you just was gonna say it respectfully i don't like how you told Kane to shut up or hush or whatever and then you interrupted her i don't like that mike that's what you should have did uh cynthia trying to play in the big um ladies league and stuff the grown folks playhouse but yet you being silent you being silent again so i see i don't took your card again because you didn't even get kenya straight at the point when you had to bring up to her what you didn't really like about the proposal and how you let her know she was being proposed to before even mike had a chance to propose to her you didn't do that right you uh, i just took your card back put you on the bench and, and, and just going to say Saranara for this season because it knows, it's no sense of putting a lot of hope in you because you're not going to act right. You're going to always be somebody's puppet or somebody's mouthpiece. And, and, and I'm just disturbed with you. I, I, I can't take it no more. I, 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 I tried. I tried to be by you. I stood by you. Tried to give you a voice. And yet you let me down once again. So we're just going to take your card. We don't want to hear from you. But we, we're going we're gonna to muddle through this particular episode. Okay. We're just going to muddle through it all. But anyway. That's what she said. Then Candy had. I forgot what Candy had said. Let me see. Oh, Candy's telling. Okay. Oh, Candy was pissed because after that little date that they had, Todd and uh, 
Ma had went to the strip club. <laughs> I was like, damn, damn, kid, if you don't get that boy, you don't get that man of yours a, a, a strip club so he can man it. So you will know exactly where to bring the babies to when you feel like you need them to be with their daddy. You could take them to it because they, they be at that strip club. And I'm like, what in the world is Ma looking like he want to go to a, a strip club for when he got all that with Kenya there? But that tells you that's a telltale sign, right? And why does uh, Todd find himself needing to be up in the strip club when he got all that nice and fineness that you pre presenting every night, every day for Todd, Candy? I, I don't understand. You just bedroom candy guru. With all the tricks of the trade and got this dungeon thing going on, sexuality all over your house, and he still want to fly to the strip club. I, don't, I make it make sense, Candy, and can you make it make sense? All right, but it just is what it is. But Candy was like furious and very annoyed. She says about um, you know what had transpired between Todd uh, and Ma leaving them after very. Uh, I won't say delightful uh, luncheon. It was kind of disturbing if you really want to put it in a perspective of a woman's frame of mind. And um, it was it was just she, she didn't like it. <laughs> she didn't like it. Kenya didn't like it. I don't know if, uh, what's his name, Mike went with them or not. Probably not. Probably not his scene, his stilo. But uh, he was in town, so he should have been spending every waking moment with Cynthia. Now. And you would have thought Ma was, too, because he don't live here either. He would want to spend some all his waking time with Cynthia. I mean, not Cynthia, but with Kenya. But uh, that didn't transpire either, so that's a telltale sign. What we all feel over here, or I ain't say that, what I feel, that is not a true marriage. You know, it just is what it is. It's just a contractual agreement. I helped you get a baby. That's pretty much it. Now let me loose. <laughs> he was like, take the handcuffs off me. I don't want to be with you anymore. Let me loose, okay? That's what he's pretty much telling King. Let me loose, baby. Let me loose. Go do whatever you got to do. But let me loose, okay? So um, pretty much nobody was happy at that point. So we moved on from there. But... um. What's her name? Cynthia did ask Kenya, uh, how are y'all doing? You know, what's going on? And, of course, Kenya called herself tearing up, telling all these other lies or allegations. And I'm like, girl, I'm sick. I'm sick of you, Kenya, because, look, if all of this is allegedly true, what you're trying to have the people t partake of as a truth story that you're giving us, then why does this man not want you why are you so low in self-esteem that you're gonna sit there because you feel you failed if you didn't try everything no 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 it has to be reciprocated the man has to be in the relationship and want the relationship for it to work it can't just be you and only you okay and it doesn't seem like mark wants you cares for you or needs you okay babe so get it together get the divorce going if it's truly a marriage file it and be gone okay and we're going to move on from that situation then we got um tanya getting all the women together where she pretty much had told them before they got off the bus that an hour later they were going to be going to a whining type of dancing class just to get them ready for carnival and uh, the other little people that would be out there whining and, and grumping and what you say, bumping and grinding like oh uh, ain't nothing wrong with a little bumpy grind i see nothing wrong my r kelly voice whoa I see nothing wrong with a little bit of grind. I see nothing wrong. Yes, honey, y'all mooded him, but I ain't mooded him, honey. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with the music. Ain't nothing wrong with grooving to his music. And what he did after he got off that microphone, that's another whole different subject, okay? That's another whole different category, and we ain't going to go into it, okay? Because he's not the subject topic. Real Housewives of Atlanta is, okay? But anyway, moving on from that situation, um, everybody come in. Everybody's there, except for Kenya. And, of course, Marla gonna be like, oh, we good, we good, we good. Kenya good, she good. And they're like, look at that Marla, like, you don't know what's wrong with uh Kenya. You don't 
girl, you weren't in the same room we were in. And she like, hell, this good. Whenever she ain't around us, it's good. Let's go on. Let's move. Let's just do what we got to do. The uh, monster not here. The devil's not here. However, y'all want to see Kenya, okay? But my love like, nah, let's go on. And Tanya was looking like, girl. But anyway, um, Kenya didn't come. We subsequently found out later on that she wasn't feeling well. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she cried herself silly. Who knows what Kenya was doing up in the room. But she was doing another nini play. Whenever they want to come to the playground and play with everybody, they feel like they, they you know, they got to be by themselves. And kind of like Mariah on Married to Medicine. She don't go to the first, when they go out on a trip or a couple's trip, she don't go to the first dinner. So it just is what it is. They made a history. They made a pattern. We're going to move on from that situation. But the rest of the girls, like I said, beside Nene, because she hadn't gotten there yet. Maybe not. She probably wouldn't have participated. She probably would have sat down and saw people dance. But it is what it is. But uh, Portia was up there twerking her for her life. Uh, like she was in some kind of contest. And um, what's her name? Eva was bouncing up on a ball trying to get her groove on, which was kind of cute. Uh, we didn't want her doing too much because she was over there in Canada. She, you know, maybe she wanted to have a baby over there in Canada. Who knows? I'm trying to figure out who is that person right there that's holding their head up. I never could figure them out because first I thought it was Yovana. I said, that ain't Yovana. Then I thought it was Eva. That ain't Eva. And I'm like, who else came on the trip? Shamia? And I said, that ain't Shamia. But if y'all can guess who that woman had her hands up because everything was just going haywire. And I think that's the next episode that's going to come up. Um... The first Sunday in um, January. Uh, let me know who that was. It didn't look like Portia either. So I, I don't know who it was. But anyway. Was it Candy? I don't know. But anyway. It just is what it is. Um, But yeah. They get down there. Tanya got them trying to whine and stuff. You know. It's that little, little Billy Road that you be doing. You know. Um, And everybody was pretty much partaking in it. Marlo. You know Marla can't dance. She probably can two step. She's my age. We be two stepping it. Um, Tanya, she's just goofy. <laughs> so whatever she was trying to do, I guess she could wind a little bit. I, I'm really not sure what she was doing. And of course, Candy, you know, said it. Well, we know Cynthia can't do nothing. So if she was two stepping over there, okay, she was trying to do something, but it was cute. Every one of them was cute, even Candy. But Candy admitted that she couldn't dance. I said, what? What? Then they do clips back on her behind, um, showing that she couldn't whine, she couldn't dance or anything. Because they showed a, um, a clip back when she was back in the group, girl escape group. And they had, um, what was her name? R. Kelly's wife, Drea Kelly, out there to teach them how to dance. And every last one of them had the steps except for Candy. Candy even stopped in the middle of rehearsal like, I don't know what y'all do. Like she was just, you know, had the dunce cap on or something like she just couldn't put it all together. And I'm like, damn, Candy, you be messing up everything sometime. You be here, there, and then nowhere at the same damn time. And I'm like, God, dog, Candy. Okay, but you admit it, so I'm going to give you a pass. You admit it that you got two left feet. You can barely two-step. It's just yeah, what it is. I got you, baby. So I'm going to get off of you. I'm going to give you a, pre a reprieve there because I'm in your same boat. If we ain't two-stepping, we ain't doing nothing. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, and then we got, after the dance class were over, we got Cynthia and Eva. They stay behind, and they're talking about uh, the engagement and the proposal and how Kenya uh, arbitrarily had kind of given her a heads up that Mike was going to propose to her, and she didn't care about it, and she talked with Mike after the fact you know they got home and got rested and all this stuff and she was saying you know kenya told me you gonna propose he said kenya told you how how she know you know kind of things like that and then he probably figured that kenya probably told her but uh it really wasn't a bad thing that she knew but it was wrong for her to tell cynthia of all people in case he you know kind of punked out or whatever wanted to do it another day you know in lieu of a better situation i don't know but you know like i said everybody was there who he had got to you know want to be there sharing that happy moment but he was kind of perturbed but i was like you know she was telling eva about it and she said oh lord it's gonna be hell at the ponderosa you know how back in the western times you go meet at the ponderosa and then y'all uh kind of like draw y'all guns at each other and, and kind of like settle it that way 
but somebody gonna be dead before it's over with <laughs> so i was like okay western lover eva okay can't tell the truth if it if, if it flew right up in your face and tried to come out your mouth you wouldn't let the truth out but it just is what it is okay but uh she was just saying you know you need to talk with her tell her how you felt about it so she will wouldn't make that mistake again uh and she was like yeah i think i'm gonna talk to her i'm gonna talk to her so they go back to their rooms or whatnot and eva's massaging her foot or whatever she's calling uh her husband michael sterling checking in or he called her checking in on her i don't know which one but um the call happened and she, she was telling him that she's pleasantly surprised you know she's getting along with everybody nobody's coming out to her this that and third and it's a lovely trip he's somewhere all right then baby okay cool go and have fun or whatnot so we leave that situation then we go to where nene finally comes into play she comes to the the uh place where the women are the hotel x and um Tanya's running down those stairs like you know she's beating somebody for her own self edification you know what i'm saying like damn okay nene got y'all running like that okay but anyway nene kind of rude to the driver telling him to get the bags so i'm like damn nene he i think he was trying to let you out as a good driver out of the automobile he i think he did know to get your bags and bring them on in that's just common courtesy he's the driver that's what the driver does especially if he helped you with your luggage he do know you have luggage but you on this aristocratical type of uh mindset where you look down at everybody and that, that's something i just don't care for nina i'm like you ain't up there with the elite you ain't up there with no bloodline type of money where well, you ain't even have to say that they just know to just send you the bill you can come in and pick up anything you want to say thank you you got it dressed up for me all right and they know your name okay and then they send you a bill okay you, you, you ain't floating like that nene okay just put it back in perspective you are just a reality show individual personality i won't even get so far to keep calling y'all stars because y'all really have no claim to fame but gossip you know you're on a gossip show you're showing us some part of your life not everything and you're paid to give pre ratchetness okay you're not like a true actor or actress that goes in and play a part you are supposed to be playing who you all are and that's why we get to talk about y'all because this is what we're saying but it seems like in another uh, tone or another spoken word that comes from you all, y'all feel like y'all just acting. So I'm like, they need to not call it no reality show if that's what y'all trying to do. But I don't know, Nene. I don't know, girl. You do be doing too much. But anyway, the gentleman gets the point that he's going to bring her luggage in, whatever. She sees Tanya. Tanya's happy to see her. I'm guessing she happy to see Tanya. I'm not really sure. But Tanya's doing her true hosting duties, doing it to the T. I was loving every minute of it. Okay, she gave Nene her keys and she tried to bring a little bit of information down to Nene who was there what they were doing what the agenda what the itinerary was this that and the third and just to see how she's feeling and doing and if that ain't a damn good host i can't tell you what was all right oh, <laughs> excellent on that i say it's excellent uh put a thousand stars on her okay but we're gonna move on for this situation and <sighs> It's a scene where all the girls are meeting on the rooftop and they're like winding down for the night. They're introduced to some little uh, hors d'oeuvres, you would call them, um, and some little drinks going on. Of course, Portia hollering about her Hennessy. Give her those Hennessy. And, you know, it just is what it is. So it was pretty much time for everybody to break bread together and to kind of get some things off their chest in a lighthearted way and of course Portia was kind of upset about what she was hearing Candy tell her what Marlo was saying and all this, this different things about what Eva was throwing out there so she just wanted to get the air clear and just understand some things about who's her friends and who's her not friend so she was addressing the question to Eva and of course mm -hmm. Eva was uh backtracking and everything and she said well you know what i don't take candy to be no liar you know what i'm saying I'm like when honey when did you not take candy to be a liar because when y'all just fuss but that, okay that that's another whole subject another whole parameter we were in 
against the Candy Factory uh, folks, Don Juan, Carmen, all them folks. That's another whole set of group of people. Let me let me let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, we're with these people, of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, but really, Candy, mm, she don't really lie. I don't think we really caught Candy in a lie. She's a messy person. She loves to take gossip here and there and let the other person know what the other person is talking about, even though it wasn't her business to do that. Okay, but it just is what it is. She wanted to do that. That's her drama field um style she's given to play her part in bringing drama this season so okay we give that to her we know she has to do it all right it ain't cold show in the real world in the real world we don't do no stuff like that we born and raised in georgia you just you just cut it how it's already sliced out to you you know what i'm saying you be as truthful if you possibly can without really hurting somebody's feelings and tearing them down but you give them the gist of where you're coming from okay even a blind man could see that. Or a blind woman. Alright. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, they went on and said what they had to say. And, of course, Miss Amnesia. That's what I'm going to call her. From, from, for, you know, to the season ends. And maybe she'll prove herself if she gets to be on for season 13. I don't know. You know, especially if they're trying to pay Kenya some more money. They might have to get rid of somebody. And I personally rather see Eva go than Cynthia. And I'd rather see uh tanya retain on and i'd rather see marla come on with a peach okay because she's been giving it she's been giving it they've been giving her more time to just be a friend of the show they've been giving her peach status presence okay <sighs> but anyway yeah um so even kind of tried to slide her way out of the situation again but again can had put on front street like you know portia said well you know i I, I I thought we had this uh, understanding. I thought we had this friendship developing. You know, um, I, I think she wanted to say I gave you a job when you didn't have one. I put you on with Rick, Rick and Smile until I came back. You know, put some ends up in your pocket or whatnot. But, yeah, I heard you was talking foul about me. And then the brat was telling me, you know, she ain't go out like that. But I'm sure she wanted to pull the brat name in there, too. And uh, Gary with the T. Because all of them were just mad at Eva when they heard that situation go down. But, you know, it just is what it is. But, um, yeah. And so, uh <laughs> They were trying to say, uh, uh-uh, that ain't what I said. I didn't say it that way. And everybody looking at her like, girl, drop it, okay? We don't want to hear. It. We know how you get down. You say things, you know, out there, think it ain't gonna get back to nobody. And then when it get back to put a person, the person come and tell you about yourself. Then you are gonna be like, I ain't say that. I now I don't recall that. Now this amnesia chick, okay? That's what we are gonna call. We didn't give her evil as her name no more. We just gonna call her amnesia chick, okay? Um, but Candace, I ain't no liar now. I ain't, I, you know, she was getting mad over there. I was like, oh, okay, now Candy want to say something. She done bought all this shit if you wish. Now she want to put her two cents in. Okay, Candy, I see how you getting down, baby. It's okay. It's cool. We got it good. Bye. So, uh, she ain't really too much make too much of friction with it, but she did apologize. She said, you know, I may have misspoke. No, you did misspoke. And they kept playing the footage back of her talking about the blogs talking about portia need to get her life together getting them bloggers straightened out about what her, her what she and dennis are going through cut the blogs are letting everybody know each and every day she could send her the text so she can clarify with them and then she talked about her c-section and you know it, and when portia see it she gonna see that didn't nobody lie that was a damn evil so pick your friends wisely portia pick your friends wisely but anyway and really, you should know better at your age. Now, you should know. But we move on from that situation. Then we got, <coughs> excuse me, um, Cynthia trying to smooth herself in to try to confront Kenya. It didn't go well. Not in Cynthia's favor. Kenya took the ball and just came back and just just served her up and just put her in a, in, in a locker somewhere just locked her up she and she was trying to somewhat dog candy out just a tad bit just a little bit how 50 cents say just a little bit da, 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 just a little bit yes yeah, she did that just a little bit uh she's saying well you know I, I heard what you said i understand what you said but i also said that i feel the same way too meaning mike was going to propose to her but you know all this intuition all this premonition stuff can you were talking about bullshit everybody could see it that's blind out there the blind people could see she was full of bullshit she wanted to take somebody else's thunder and toss it up in the air and let the cookies fall wherever they were going to fall whether he proposed or not okay 
Kenya is just a, a what you call a joy stealer is where she is. Okay, she always wants you to think she's on your side, that she's down with you. And she was talking about that bitch. I'm down for her now. How you say bitch or how you say itch? In a friendly tone, it don't come with that tonation she used. It came that tonation she used. It's like she really was calling, you know, the bad way of calling somebody, like them fighting words in a sense. I I just didn't get it, and I understand why Cynthia don't get it. That's why I took her player's card, not her player's card, but her OG card. Just her being a humanitarian. Just her being outspoken for her own self just have, having a backbone still nowhere got a backbone bigger than uh her own mama you know what i'm saying that's bad to say so we just took we just took her off the team she's going to try out next year or next season and we're going to see what we're going to bring in because i you know <laughs> at this point I was on Cynthia's side. I was like, okay, I'd rather see Cynthia. But no, nah, just bring Tanya on full time. Because Lee Tanya, she might be joyful, bubbly, and all like that. But if you say something wrong, she on your ass. She on your ass, point, period, and blank. That damn Cynthia, girl. I'm like, Ugh. But anyway, like I said, Cynthia did not prevail. She didn't stand at home. Shit. She was bringing up what Candy said, what Mike felt. Like, damn, what you feel? What you feel, Cynthia? What what ran up your skirt and just your skirt and got you all up and bothered? Okay. Can you just give that to Kenya and let it go? But no, you didn't. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay. Um then, you know, when Kenya was saying she ride for Cynthia Hart, everything, then nobody believed it. Everybody was talking in their confessions like, yeah, really, uh-huh, I can't see it. You don't show it. You know, everybody was just like, no, no, you don't. Okay, you don't ride hard for her. Anything you put her down every chance you get, you shoot her down. I mean, Nene didn't treat her that worse as you did. I've never seen Nene just talk to Cynthia with total disregard the way Kenya has talked to Cynthia in public, okay? Maybe we do that stuff in private, but she does it in public. I've never seen Nene do that. Of all the horrible things Nene has done and, and said about Cynthia in public or whatever, when she was angry and mad and they was out here having a war of the words um, on these um bloggers shows or um talk shows or radio shows, you know, they were doing a lot towards each other. But my goodness, as far as... Nene saying it when she's in Cynthia's presence that never transpired or I can't remember anybody in fact checkers want to tell me about it let me know um you know she goes on to say she was happy for uh Cynthia and this that and the third and then she's pretty much made a fool out of herself when they went to that triple date that they had and Mark had pretty much tore her down from the top of her head to the soles of her feet at that dinner and then she's going to get up and make a toast uh, to all the great men who take up for their uh, wives or their partners and this, that, and that. I just totally make a fool out of herself. Like, we already saw what Mark did. We heard it, saw it. Put it to rest, can you? Don't get up here and try to start no other mess with Mark that y'all going to probably go home or ride home and be fussing about. Okay? But I'm just saying, she she likes that. She likes for Mark to get on her ass, evidently, because she's still with them. She's with them to this day, I think. I'm hearing uh, from people that come over my channel telling me, oh, they hang out. They were with each other this past week. That did that, whatever. Okay? <sighs> I said that to say this, you know, if it ever came out that Kenya was fooling her rider dies or, you know, making a fool out of them, making them think one way when it's another different way, that's shame on her. And that's going to be in a Kenya's career because nobody's going to take her for a grain of salt. They're going to be like, no, nah, we don't like you. You deceptive. You deceived everybody. You know what I'm saying? But that's her cross to bear, not mine. But then after the women had called herself getting together, we got Nene walk up in the the, I'm finna say something y'all But she walks up in the camp honey She cool She like Al Pacino in Scarface <laughs> She had them all silent up there Didn't know what to say But Marlo introduced herself She said welcome baby Hey how you doing You had a nice flight And all that kind of stuff But that was it But Nina was like Okay I'm here bitches Now what <laughs> That's what she said Now what and Kenya didn't have nothing to say. I didn't have that hand pointed up or anything. It was like, to be continued. And that's where I'm going to stop, guys. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed this video. Um, I definitely told y'all how I felt about it as we went along th during each scene or whatnot. Uh, like I said, it didn't really get good to towards the end. 
it's just one of those things you know they either gonna give it to us at the first part and be dried in or vice versa but um yeah it was a pretty good show it was is what it is i'm glad we got nene back in there throw some blows or whatever but you know i ain't got her ass the queen reigning no more i took her i ain't giving it back either because she ain't showed me nothing like she gonna run like it's a rumor out here now talking about she may um not come back for season 13 i'm like you're gonna play these come back come here come back come you know lead come back them kind of games shit just stay off for real housewives of atlanta because you know we don't roll for you for so long but now it's like you losing steam you losing energy you don't really want to be up there running the race no more tell us what you want baby and stick in it okay we could be for you we can be against you it, it doesn't matter because i call a spade every day uh i'm watching something if you ain't acting in the demeanor that you showed me how you showed yourself to be on this show i ain't got no love for you everybody can get it you know what i'm saying i could be biased on some people i can be unbiased it just depends on what you give me because i'm only grading you on what you're showing me that's it that's all Okay, but peace and blessings to you all. Get down in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about. Did I miss something? Did y'all want to educate me again on something? I don't know what. Or y'all just talk amongst yourselves. Just be respectful to one another. That's all I ask, okay? But uh, I'll see y'all next video. And don't forget, to, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, what you waiting on? Go on and subscribe, okay? I'm sure it'll be something that you would like that I'll talk about. Or just subscribe just to hear me talk and you get on me. I I, I don't know. Just subscribe, okay? It's, it benefits me. Uh, and share my videos. That benefits me because it lets other people know that I'm out here. And if they like my commentary, they'll come on too. I mean, it's a free uh, exchange. You know what I'm saying? I give y'all entertainment, or at least I try to give you some entertainment, and y'all get entertainment gossip right at your fingertips, okay? And you're going to always have your perspective, and they may differ from mine here and there, but it just is what it is, okay? But that's all I had for this video. Y'all be safe, be breezy, as my daughter say, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.